भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोतम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो चय मुदीर ये नष्ट प्रयेशु अभद्रेश नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैष्टिके ओम अज्ञान तिमरंदन शलाखा चाक्षुरुनुत तस्म श्री गुरव नम श्री चैतन्य मनोबिस्त स्थापित भूतले स्वयं रूपा कदम ददा स्वदातिक वंदे हम श्री गुरो श्रीयुतापदकमल श्री गुरोन वैष्णव श्री रूप सगरजत सहगन रघुनाथ सजीव सद्वैत सवदूत परिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य देव श्री राधा कृष्ण पद सहगन ललिता श्री विशाखा हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेशा गोपिका राधा कांता नमस्तुते तप्त कंचन गौरंगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी ऋषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नाम नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे वंचकूभ्य कृपा सिंधु पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवासदी गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे We continue reading from Shrimad Bhagavatam, uh, Canto Three, Chapter Twenty One, Text Twenty Two. Where Kapila Muni, he is having the darshan of the Lord, and he is glorifying the Lord appropriately. Rishir Uvacha iti avya likam pranuto abjanabas tam abas ab ab bhas. शे वचा स्मृतेन सुपर्ण पक्षोपरी रोचम प्रेमा स्मितोद्वीक्षण विभ्रमदु मैत्रिया रिज्यूम्ड सिंसियरली एक्सटोल्ड इन दीज वर्ड्स लॉर्ड विष्णु शाइनिंग वेरी ब्यूटिफुली ऑन द शोल्डर्स ऑफ गरुदा रिप्लाइड विद वर्ड्स एज स्वीट एज नेक्टर इज आई ब्राउज मूव ग्रेसफुली as he looked at the sage with a smile full of affection purport by his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami shla prabhu par the word vachasam ritena is significant whenever the lord speaks he speaks from the transcendental world he does not speak from the material world since he is transcendental his speech is also transcendental as his activity everything in relation to him is transcendental so the lord the lord he is sachit ananda vigraha completely spiritual so his words are also spiritual transcendental not material like bhagavad gita he spoke 5000 years ago but till today we are trying to understand bhagavad gita why because this is uh, transcendental knowledge eternal knowledge so here also he speaking his speech is transcendental everything all his past times are eternal his past times his qualities his name his form his paraphernalia everything is transcendental the word amrita refers to one who does not meet with death the words and activities of the lord are deathless therefore they are not manufactured of this material world the sound of this material world and that of the spiritual world are completely different the sound of the spiritual world is nectarian and eternal 
whereas the sound of the material world is hackneyed, hackneyed and subject to end. So the difference between spiritual and material sound is being given. Spiritual sound is eternal. Eternal. As we just said, Bhagavad Gita, we are still trying to hear it. And it will continue for millions of years later also. Eternal. But our spiritual, uh, our material things, we don't even want to hear yesterday's news. You know, we don't want to hear. We want, it's, it's always very relative the material sound relative to the circumstance. The sound of the holy name, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, everlastingly increases the enthusiasm of the chanter. If one repeats monotonous material sound words, he will feel exhausted. But if he chants Hare Krishna 24 hours a day, he will never feel exhausted. Rather, he will feel encouraged to continue chanting more and more. So if we take one word and try to repeat it over and over again, the Prabhupada would say Coca-Cola. You know, if we chant Coca-Cola, how much will we chant? We won't chant it for years and years, probably a day or two. We won't want to. But Hare Krishna Mantra, their devotees who say they're chanting since 50 years. And the more they chant, the more they want to chant. When the Lord replied to the sage Gardama, the words Vacha Samritena is specifically mentioned. Since he spoke from the transcendental world, he replied in transcendental words. And when he spoke, his eyebrows moved with great affection. When a devotee praises the glories of the Lord, the Lord is very satisfied and he bestows his transcendental benediction upon the devotee without reservation because he's always causelessly merciful toward his devotee. So Kardamamani, because he's a devotee of the Lord, he was able to glorify the Lord appropriately. He was able to please the Lord appropriately. And the Lord is pleased. And so he is smiling and he is uh, offering his benediction. Uh, the Lord, whenever he's pleased, like us also, you know, when we are pleased with someone, someone does something for us, our heart is touched, automatically all the good wishes come from, from our heart for that person, right? Similarly, Krishna, when we, when we are pleasing him appropriately, then even he is bestowing his blessings, his, his mercy to, toward the devotee. Anyone would like to comment on anything? Because here we are hearing the difference between the spiritual sound and material sound. You know, so the, the, when we are hearing from Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam, all this is spiritual. It's not material. It's all spiritual. And that's why it's eternal. And it brings bliss to the heart. Shri Bhagavanu Vacha Viditva Tava Chaityam That when we are hearing this, then we are in the Vishuddha Sattva? Uh, no, well, because <coughs> our... Sorry. Uh, bless you. So our intention again then comes in. What modes are we in? Hmm. You know? So we are right now, right now not in Vishuddha Sattva. Of course, the, the Transcendental activity of hearing Bhagavatam is in Vishuddha Sattva. But we, how are we doing it? You know, what's my intention behind it? Then that will come into consideration. And how am I doing it? Am I, because we are, we are controlled by goodness, passion, and ignorance. Mm. So how am I doing it then? We can again begin to understand how merciful how merciful God is, you know, that he's giving us an opportunity to understand this completely spiritual uh, knowledge with whatever situation we are in right now. Although we are not capable, we're not capable, we do not have the tools, but we are hearing about the spiritual knowledge. He's giving us this, this chance to hear yeah. about him. So we should consider ourselves greatly fortunate. 
श्री भगवान वाचा विदित्व तव चैत्य में पुरैवा समयोजित यद अर्थम आत्मा नियम वाहम समार्चित The Supreme Lord said, "Having come, in, having come to know what it, what was in your mind, I have already arranged for that which you have worshipped me well through your mental and sensory discipline." The Supreme Personality of Godhead, in His Paramatma feature, is situated in everyone's heart. So, Paramatma, He is there. Krishna, in His form as Paramatma, is in the heart of every living entity. not that he is in the heart of only the human beings or of people of a particular who are born in a particular tract of land no in each and every living entity animals trees birds aquatics all living entities all over the universe he therefore knows the past present and future of every individual person as well as his desires activities and everything about him You know, imagine what a database here to get some data on people. There's so many, there's there's so much study going trying to understand the data of a person. Here, the Paramatma he knows so much data, past, present, present, future also. It desires activities, everything. It is stated in Bhagavad Gita that he situated he seated in the heart as a witness. The personality of God had knew the heart's desire of. Kardama Muni, and he had already arranged for the fulfillment of his desires. He never disappoints a sincere devotee, regardless of what he wants. But he never allows anything which will be detrimental to the individual's devotional service. So here we can have the, uh, the, the faith, the trust. We can trust Krishna. He knows. he knows our desires and he knows how to fulfill our desires of which desires should be fulfilled because he wants us to come back to him when he sees that a person is uh, very sincere to to know him to come back to him krishna makes the arrangements he he makes the arrangements you know he does not allow anything which is detrimental in any individual devotional service so that is krishna that is his love his care you know devotee care is so much happening about devotee care krishna really cares about about each and every one of us so no vajatu mrsheva syat prajadyaksha mad arhanam bhavad videshva atitaram mai sankrabhi Atmanam. The Lord continued, "My dear Rishi, O leader of the living entities, for those who serve me in devotion by worshiping me, especially persons like you who have given up everything unto me, there is never any question of frustration." So here, Krishna is reassuring Kardama Muni, reassuring that those who are those who are his devotees, serving me in devotion by worshiping me. so those who are worshiping krishna with devotion krishna is always always um, making arrangements so that they can come back to him even if one has some desires one engaged in the service of the lord is never frustrated those engaged in a service are called sakam and akam those who approach the supreme personality of god with desires for material enjoyment are called sakam and those devotees who have no material desires for sense gratification but serve the supreme lord out of spontaneous love for him are called akama sakama devotees are divided into four classes those in distress those in need of money the inquisitive and the wise someone worships the supreme lord because of bodily or mental distress someone else worships the supreme lord because he is in need of money someone else worships the lord out of inquisitiveness to know him as he is and someone wants to know the lord as a philosopher can know him by the research work of his wisdom there is no frustration for
for any of these four classes of men. Each is endowed with the desired result of his worship. So Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita seventh chapter that four kind of pious living entities come to him. Those in this pious, those because not everyone in distress comes to Krishna or not everyone in need of money comes to Krishna, or not anyone who is inquisitive or in knowledge comes to Krishna. But he says the pious living entities who are in need, who have these material desires, yeah, distress, need of money, inquisitive and wise in searching for knowledge, yeah, they come to him. That's what he's saying, they come to me. And so they are called Sakam devotees and Akamas, they're, they have no material desire for themselves. Their only desire is to please Krishna. But doesn't matter if one is Sakam or Akam. Doesn't matter. There is no frustration. Krishna uh, is taking care of each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. We are all encouraged to take shelter of Krishna because he can fulfill our desires. And also at the same time, uh, increase our devotion, our bhakti. Uh, at the same time, bring us, uh, like help us in our spiritual journey. Anyone wanted to comment anything on what we just read? About the sakam and akam. No. Prajapati Suttaha Smaran Manur Vikyata Mangalaha Brahma Vartam Yo Adishwan Shasti Saptar Nava Mahim The Empress Vayambhuva Manu, the son of Lord Brahma, who is well known for his righteous acts, has his seat in Brahma Vrata and rules over the earth with its seven oceans. Sometimes it is stated that Brahmavrat is a part of Kurukshetra or that Kurukshetra itself is situated in Brahmavrata because the demigods are recommended to perform spiritual ritualistic performances in Kurukshetra. But in others' opinion, Brahmavrata is a place in Brahmaloka where Swayambhuva ruled. There are many places on the surface of this earth which are also known in the higher planetary systems. We have places on this planet like Vrindavan, Dwarka, and Mathura, but they are also eternally situated in Krishna Loka. There are many similar names on the surface of the earth, and it may be that in the Boar Age, Swayambhuva Manu ruled this planet as stated here. So it's said that sometimes it's Brahmavrata is referring to the to Brahma Lok, Sakya Lok, the planet of Brahmaji, that Manu is, is there, he's ruling from there. And there is sometimes it is mentioned that he's ruling from this Kurukshetra, which we have here on this earth planet. And then Prabhupada is mentioning that here we do have many places which are famous throughout the universe, Vrindavan, Dwarka, Mathura. We hear in Krishna Leela that how demigods from different parts would come to offer prayers to Krishna when he was here. You know, so they know, they know Vrindavan, Dwarka, and Mathura. And even five, up to 500 years ago, when uh, Sachi, uh, when Lord Chaitanya appeared, the demigods would come to see him. You know, because it's a rare opportunity for the demigods also to see the Supreme Lord. It's very rare for them. So they also want to take that opportunity. Like suppose, you know, um, it's a very great important personality comes and we have an opportunity to see them, then we are interested to go see them. So demigods, they, they want to see Krishna. He's the most important person. The word Mangala is significant. Mangala means one who is elevated in every respect in the opulences of religious performances ruling power, cleanliness, and all other good qualities. Mangala. Mangala. I think it also means auspicious, right? Mangala. And aus, man, you know, 
And by here is referred to is uh, one who is righteous acts. The acts of this person are very righteous. Vikhyatya means celebrated. Swayambhava Manu was celebrated for all good qualities and opulences. So Swayambhava Manu is the father of mankind and he is qualified to be the father of mankind by his activities. He's a pure devotee. He is, um, his acts are righteous. He knows how to do his duty properly. So we can see that these great personalities are great because they're qualified to be in that position. He's qualified to be in the position of Swayambhuva Manu. So, Sacheha Vipra Raja Rashir Mahishya Shatarupaya Ayasyati Didrikshustvam Parashwa Dharma Ko Vidaha. The day after tomorrow, O Brahmana, that celebrated emperor who is expert in religious activities, will come here with his queen Shatarupa, wishing to see you. So the Lord is telling him what's going to happen. Atma jam asita pangim vyaha shila gunan vitam rigayantim patim dasyati anurupayate prabhu. He has a grown up daughter whose eyes are black. She's ready for marriage. And she has good character and all good qualities. She is also searching for a good husband. My dear sir, her parents will come to see you who are exactly suitable for her just to deliver their daughter as your wife. The selection of a good husband for a good girl was always entrusted to the parents. Here it is clearly stated that Manu and his wife were coming to see Kardama Muni to offer their daughter because the daughter was well qualified and the parents were searching out a similarly qualified man. This is the duty of parents. Girls are never thrown into public, into the public street to search out their husband. For when girls are grown up and are searching after a boy, they forget to consider whether the boy they select is actually suitable for them. Out of the uh, urge of sex desire, a girl may accept anyone, but if the husband is chosen by the parents, they can consider who is to be selected and who is not. According to the Vedic system, therefore, the girl is given over to a suitable boy by the parents. She is never allowed to select her own husband independently. So in the Vedic system, when the Vedic system was prevalent, the parents would choose a suitable match for their children, for their girl or for their boy, considering whether they would match, you know, in all aspects, the, the personalities match, the qualifications match, the qualities match, the culture, the background, the, the values. And based on that, it was uh, decided, okay, that they should, they, they, they are suitable for each other. We can see here, Kardamamani, he's a sage, he's a yogi. And Swayambhuva Manu is, is the king. He's the ruler. So his daughter is a princess. And here, here is a yogi. So they're not saying that, oh, I'm going to get my daughter married only to a prince, you know, because my daughter is a princess. But they're trying to see someone who's suitable, suitable for their daughter. Samahitam te. But, but of course, now the, it's, it's where we are very far away from Vedic culture. You know, it's, we are very far away from it. Maybe some places it's still prevalent, but, but generally in, in big cities, it's not. You know. It's love marriage. Yeah, now, now it is, it's all the mm -hmm. girls and boys then they want, they choose. And the parents also say, yeah, you, you go ahead and choose it, you know, because uh, it, it's different, it's different, you know? It's, it's the different time right now. What can we say? So, Samahitam Te Hridayam Yatreman Parivastaran 
सात्वाम ब्रमन नृपा वधु कामम आशु भजिष्यति that princess or holy sage will be just the type you have been thinking of in your heart for all these long years she will soon be yours and will serve you to your heart's content the lord awards all benedictions according to the heart's desire of a devotee so the lord informed gardamamuni the girl who is coming to be married with you is a princess the daughter of emperor swayambhava and so just suitable for your purpose so the lord awards all benediction according to our heart's desire so we should be also careful what we are desiring for you know sometimes i think that i'm like first i will have a desire and then i will sometimes say oh krishna but please don't fulfill that desire you know <laughs> so we have to be careful what what is what is our desire because krishna is kind he's for he's fulfilling our desire so only by god's grace can one get a nice wife just as he desires similarly it is only by god's grace that a girl gets a husband suitable to her heart thus it is said that if we pray to the supreme lord in every transaction of our material existence everything will be done very nicely and just suitable to our heart's desire in other words in all circumstances in other words in all circumstances we must take shelter of the supreme personality of god him and depend completely on his decision this this is the that depend on the will of krishna because understanding that he is my best friend he knows what is good for me my dear krishna i didn't i don't even know what is good for me my i have so many desires which are not even good for me but if we completely depend on krishna because he knows what is good it's not easy it's not easy to do that very it's easy to say it it's very easy to say it but to actually do it is not easy why because this is the reason we are here in the material world because we always feel i know better i know better than than the lord that is the reason we are here so the more we understand that no the lord knows better the lord knows better the better for us take shelter of him the better for us why because we will we will feel we will start feeling comfortable we'll start feeling happy or we'll start feeling bliss man proposes god disposes the fulfillment of desires therefore should be entrusted to the supreme personality of godhead that is the nicest solution how many of us are willing to do that you know oh krishna i completely uh depend on you that whatever you let only your desires be fulfilled for me whatever you desire for me let that only happen i have so many desires this 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 but what you think is right for me please let that only that happen it's not easy to do that not easy but we have to begin somewhere to begin somewhere the mamuni desired only a wife but because he was a devotee of the lord the lord selected a wife for him who was the emperor's daughter a princess thus gardamamuni got a wife beyond his expectation if we depend on the choice of the supreme personality of godhead we will receive benedictions in greater opulence than we desire if we depend on the choice of the supreme personality of godhead we will receive benedictions in greater opulence than we desire beautiful this sentence yeah. yeah so we our desire we just need to come to krishna just 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 my dear krishna this is my desire and he will fulfill it in the best possible way um i remember the example of a teacher atul krishna prabhu would give us and he will say that um the mother takes the daughter to a bakery 
and there is a jar of chocolates. And so the owner tells the daughter, tells the little girl, you can take how many chocolates ever you want from the jar, but she didn't take any. So when the mother and daughter were leaving, the, the owner, he picked up a handful of chocolates and he gave it to the daughter, like a, like a big handful and gave it to the daughter. And the daughter was happy and she took it very nicely. And so the mother asked the daughter, hey, he offered you, why didn't you take it at that time? And when he gave you, you happily took all so many of them. Then she said, my dear mother, if I would have taken, how many would I have taken? You know, I would have taken one or two for myself. But he gave me so many, much more than I could imagine. <laughs> so it's like that. Yeah. yeah, his hand is bigger and the daughter's, that girl's hand is so small. Yeah. How much she could have taken? <laughs> yeah. True, yeah. yeah. So we, so, you know, we are very tiny. We are tiny. Mm -hmm. And so if we depend on the Lord, he is unlimited. He can give us very great things, very much beyond our expectation, beyond our expectation. The only thing is we just have to, you know, depend on him. Depend on him. He knows what is good for me. He knows. He knows what is better, better for me than I know myself. It is also significantly noted here that Kardamamani was a Brahmana, whereas Emperor Swayambhuva was a Kshatriya. Therefore, intercaste marriage was current even in those days. The system was that a Brahmana could marry the daughter of a Kshatriya, but a Kshatriya could not marry the daughter of a Brahmana. We have evidences from the history of the Vedic age that Shukracharya offered his daughter to Maharaj Yayati, but the king had to refuse to marry the daughter of a Brahmana. Only with the special permission of the Brahmana could they marry. Thus, intercaste marriage was not prohibited in olden days, many millions of years ago, but there was a regular system of social behavior. So intercaste marriages could happen. Brahmana, a Brahmana man could marry a daughter from Kshatriya family, but a Kshatriya man could not marry a Brahmana daughter. And, but he needed to get a special permission to do that. It's just to understand that the qualification, the qualities, the idea was so that the couple could live happily, peacefully. You know, th that was the idea do they match in the varnas? Because the varna is, is very different of a brahmana and Chat. the natures are very different. So just so that there is no clash and that there is peace and harmony in the marriage, that's the reason there was uh, these considerations. So did anyone else want to add anything? Yeah, as you mentioned that, uh, like for the prayers also we do, so we, we can trust on Krishna that whatever is good for us, then please do that. And I still remember our grandmother always used to tell us like when she used to get a news that somebody's not good, somebody's ill in the family or something has happened to somebody. And then she would always say one single line, Ki Bhagwan, uske liye jo acha hai na, aap wo kariyega, please. Because we don't know what is good for the other person. Yeah, true. She always said only one line: "Ki Bhagwan, uske liye jo bhi acha hoga, hume nahi pata kya acha hai unke liye, kya bura hai. Lekin jo unke liye acha hai." And then she always used to tell us. Then and now, then whenever, like this is my personal, because we hear a lot of ambulance sound throughout the whole day, sitting at our home. So. Whenever I hear from her, I learned that because she used to do it for everybody whenever she get, used to get a news of a relative or anybody. So whenever I hear an ambulance sound, I always pray, Krishna, I don't know whosoever is there. Whatever is good for that person, please do that. Because I am listening that sound. And if I can just pray, and if our prayer can, can be of some help to somebody, some jiva, then why not? Very nice. 
so from her i learned that then now wherever i am because it doesn't matter wherever you are you hear a sound and that sound means that krishna please do whatever is good for that person i don't know just do whatever is good for that person very good so similarly we can pray to krishna also for uh, because sometimes we insist with him that our desires are not being fulfilled you know sometimes we end up like in a in like why krishna i had this desire why why something else totally something else is happening so then it seems we should uh, the same thing that oh it's probably krishna knows better he knows better for me what's good for me yeah this prayer is there which when i do recite tumhi sab kuch janat priyatam teri ichha puran ho sukh mein dukh mein mere priyatam teri ichha puran ho hmm, nice. so like what you wish you know krishna hmm. you do yeah yeah sukh and dukh and yeah and so when we are really in that circumstance really in the middle yeah. of something you know because at that moment we are like why that's the moment we end up fighting with krishna why krishna why is you know that that moment you know at that moment we are like why is this happening krishna and that time we have to remember no he knows better it's very difficult very difficult but if at that moment we are able to say this is what krishna's will it i will accept it you know because in retrospect we we understand that at least that's what my realization in retrospect like i say oh yes it was good you know it was well i i say krish it was good you didn't fulfill that desire you know now, now i can understand why you didn't do it this is much better but at that moment i was fighting with him you know but at that moment if i'm able to remember that i need to accept it this is this is good for me i think with time no it yeah. does right yeah. yeah i agree with slowly yeah. when we are hearing in chant we are hearing i think yeah. it will you know it will yeah. somehow yeah, yeah. it, it helps because then suddenly when we are put in that situation then we can move out of the situation and look that no this is it has yeah. to be for my good i have to trust him yes because he will never hurt me he will never ever do anything for my he will always do everything for my good like he will never do that is not good for me so then slowly and slowly when we chant and hear and read then he he empowers our knowledge to understand that yeah thank you and i have felt that so many times yes before i always used to nag or say things but now it's okay if if i have got it it's for my good and if i haven't then it's also for my good so why like why do i have to keep nagging about everything i don't have to because i will just get whatever is good for me he knows that's best for me so i just can't keep on nagging every time he will also say kya bachcha hai ye pure time bas <laughs> i know i mean he will still do what is best but he but why because अगर पता है तो कृष्णा को पता ही है ना मतलब हमें इतना तो विश्वास रखना ही पड़ेगा कि वट एवर कृष्णा इज डूइंग इट दैट इज फॉर आर बेस्ट बिकॉज ही कैन नेवर हर्ट अस नेवर एवर एवर सो वट एवर वी गेट वट एवर वी डोंट गेट एंड एंड एवरी दिस हैपन्स विद एवरी वन ऑफ अस नॉट ओनली मी बट दिस इज हैपनिंग एवरी मोमेंट विद एवरी वन ऑफ अस मे दैट बी मटीरियल डिजायर मे दैट बी सिचुएशन मे दैट बी रिलेशन मे दैट बी are are anything anything in life we have so many things in life but whatever we get it is not without his desire mm. and that has to be good for us because he has given that to us so it has to be good yeah thank you so much and then it come, brings me and then it brings me to another point and that's the reason we need to be grateful then yeah you know great yes. grateful the gratitude shukrana yes. absolutely because i really my dear krishna i don't deserve this but because of your kindness you're giving this to me the gratitude like yeah. 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 krishna he said he said krishna 
for yeah. the you know people in Ukraine. Yes. I I I wish that please give Zelensky and Putin the right knowledge. Mm-hmm. You are there in them, Krishna. Give them the right thing to do, because it's only you who can just show them the right path. It's it's no people. It's not people's fault. Maybe they are they are all collectively their karma is there. That's why they are put in this situation. So, but please give Putin and Zelensky some knowledge that they can. stop this only they both can stop nobody else can do anything like krishna within them can just motivate them to stop it whenever this is right so again we can just pray because we don't know what's krishna's will out of this situation there's a question comes here no like devotees and all are there and what's happening and you know nothing I... happened to any single devotee all are fine have you been seeing the videos no I'm they are not. so I've just properly... been seeing the news and um, no it's... the devotees because from the temple there are so many uh, mm-hmm. people helping there and they are all living together in the compound of the temple and nothing mm-hmm. has happened to them you will not believe and they are mm-hmm. but some living. devotees are facing difficulties because but that is... them are leaving the country and then how they are you know with some of the but whatever it is you know i feel Whether devotee or no, there's a lot no, of people. people. Each of us belong yes, to Krishna. The kids, the children, yeah, yeah. we are all Krishna's children. Yes, yes. Each absolutely. and every living entity, and so we need to pray for all everyone yes. who is affected, who is who is so so affected by this current situation. And the more we and can, know that prayers are powerful. Yeah, just just keep chanting for them, and it will help. You know. We chant. Yeah, because we don't know. Maybe Putin says that. Okay, now let me stop it. Zelensky might say that. Okay, I'll agree. It's just that you don't. You want me not to join NATO? Okay, I'll sign it. I'll not join NATO. So maybe the prayers are powerful, yeah. and we don't know. Yeah, we can. We can just pray for them. For yeah, everyone who is involved, each and every individual who is affected. Your by this, you know, pray to Krishna for His grace and mercy. Mm. So let's stop here. Yeah. And Ma Shri Mad Bhagavatam ki chesh la prabhu bhad ki chesh gor prem ne hari bol hari Krishna.